everyone, welcome to Abstract Boss. My name is Ashley and today I am going to walk you through how to use liquid diamonds casting resin and talk to you a little bit about my thoughts on the resin as well as walking you through how to make the pendants that I've been making lately. So if that's something that interests you, stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome to Abstract Boss. Today I am going to be talking to you about liquid diamonds casting resin. Now I put a little note there at the front that I got this from the epoxyresinstore.com and if you look in my link, my description box below, you'll actually see that I do have a 20% off coupon code for you all. Okay, so the liquid diamonds casting resin was absolutely amazing. I jumped in, I don't know if y'all can see because the thing is right, but basically it's only to there because I've already utilized almost all of this. I loved it so much and I wanted to show you what it looks like after it's done um, curing and then sits overnight. It came out of my um, measuring cup just like this. It was so easy to take out and I loved that. Um, I loved that it was so liquidy that it basically all sat down at the bottom. When I work with other resins, usually there's a line of resin still sitting on the sides that I have to pick off. And this was probably the easiest cleanup I have, okay, not probably, it was the easiest cleanup I have had ever. And so I really wanted to point that out. Another thing is this was the first Time I have ever actually utilized a resin that is um, two to one ratio. So instead of measuring it out, I decided to weigh it out. Now this does say that you can do it either by weighing or measuring. Um, I prefer to just weigh since I have a scale and I feel like my eyes could play tricks on me sometimes. So I'm going to walk you through how to weigh it out. And then I'm going to, you could do it in two separate cups or you could do it in the same. Um, I like to do it in two separate cups and then mix them into one. Now I don't need a lot to work with this pendant. So I'm just going to weigh out a little bit. Let's do one ounce. There we go. And then 0.5. Okay. And now you just want to go ahead and put those in the same cup, grab your popsicle stick and mix it together. Now, another thing that I wanna point out is this has just been in my garage. It's kind of a cold day and it's still crystal clear. I really do like that. Oh, Foxy. Okay, another thing that I've really loved about this resin is how easy it is to be mixed. Look at this, it is just like water. I love it. And you can see very easily whether or not it is mixing together. You can see those cloudy streaks and it's very minimal on the bubbles. Okay, now there were no actual like time recommendations on this particular resin. So what I decided to do was just to go with the same three minute that every other resin has had. And really, even by then, I already know it's mixed um, because I don't see any of the cloudy streaks and that's kind of one of my big factors to looking to see whether or not it's mixed enough. Now you do, just like any other resin, wanna to continue to scrape the sides and to scrape the bottoms. This is gonna help get all of both parts of resins together and mixed properly 
and that's gonna help you to have the best cure possible. Okay, so I'm actually gonna do this particular pendant different than the other ones that I've been doing. And I want to sprinkle a little bit of the glitter in. And just let it sort of accent. All right, so now that I've mixed, I'm gonna go ahead and do half in one cup, half in another. Probably a little extra on the purple. And I just wanna show you how few of uh, bubbles there are in there. It's very minimal and I love it. And it's still liquidy too, so it's actually extremely easy to pour and pour tiny amounts into wherever you need. But if you need to, you can utilize pipettes too, which I love using in my studio because I think that it makes a lot of stuff extremely much easier, honestly. Um, so that's something I highly encourage. There we go. Now these colors, this is the Crystal Violet and the Light Teal from Patty's Pigments. The teal I like because it kind of has a color shifting effect. And that ends up being really neat in the pendants. Getting tongue tied here. Okay, so if you're working with a paper cup, it's very easy to do this. Just go ahead and squish on one part and that's gonna give you a pour. Take your popsicle sticks out though because it's not easy to work with popsicle sticks in. Now this is silicone mat that I'm working with underneath. This is because the resin will pop right off and that's exactly what I needed. So what I like to do is just alternate with my colors. when I pour, and I do, uh, very similar to my fluid painting, I do a lot of pours. Uh, I alternate a lot. So that is something that I highly encourage whenever you're working with um, doing kind of like a multicolored look of pendants. It is really beautiful um, that way versus just kind of quickly pouring the colors in. I think it makes a huge difference. my black cloth. That's so cool. Okay, and then on this one, I'm gonna try something a little different. Now, the other key thing is resin shrinks when it's curing. So, um, do not take these out before looking at them, or when you look at them, just wait. Once it's done curing, you can do another layer of clear, or you can do another layer of color on top and it will dome in there. So that way it is nice and flat on the back versus um, edgy along these curves where they meet at the silicone mold. Okay, so I have some leftover gold leaf that I was working with. And so I'm gonna do a little trial piece here. Okay, so now I can alternate with my colors again. Now what I also found so great about this resin is I took these out after about 12 hours and they were done. Um, and I thought that was so cool because I, I mean, I didn't get any fingerprints on it as far as I know. Um, I couldn't really tell actually because it was a rough edge. So I loved the idea that I could take something out so quickly versus the whole 24 hour wait because y'all know I'm not very patient. <laughs> Uh, so it was very nice to know that uh, I have something that sort of works with my personality. So as the resin settled in, I had a little bit more space in here. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm just sort of filling it up and I'm allowing it to bubble over. Um, I'll try to take a picture of that once I'm done recording this particular segment. So that way you can see what I'm talking about. And then, um, actually that one's pretty bubbled. You'll be able to understand what I mean by the bubble. But 
it shrinks, so it'll be okay. All right, and I have a little bit of extra, so might as well play around with my star mold. Okay, now if your doming seems to come over onto the edge, you could take a Q-tip and that'll clean it right up. All right, I will come back when these are cured tomorrow morning and show you the results. All right, so now that everything's done, I wanna show you a little something about what happens when you dome it while it's in the mold versus um, taking it out and then having to do it afterwards. So I had domed it just as you had seen and it is nice and flat on the back here. It's beautiful, the image itself looks like it's normal. Um, and when I say that, you'll understand what I mean when I show you the other one. Um, but here's also the downside. You could over dome, which I did, and um, you actually might be able to see through this area. Okay, so this little spot right there is um, actually a result of me going over, and you can probably see better, yep, on that side. So this is very easy to remove. I could just chop this off with um, a blade. I, I mean, look, I'm even taking it off right now. It's very easy to remove, um, and I think that this is way easier than the effort it takes to fill in a spot from under doming. Um, so what I mean by that, I've had to fill this one in. You see all that shininess that's on top? Um, I really hope that you guys can see the depth in that. Um, the depth is because it went down, it shrunk, and it looked sort of like this one. I did the gold leafing on here, but focus. there we go. Oh, come on. There. Oh, you can kind of see the ledge right there. Um, you can kind of see how the leafing goes down. That's the dip that I'm trying to explain here um, from the resin shrinking. Now, what I have been doing is I'll gold leaf it, silver leaf it, copper leaf it, whatever floats my boat, and then I'm filling it, which is what I did in the black one, I just didn't do any leafing on this one. Um, I'm filling it with resin. So when you're molding something, it is very sucky to have to go back and do something else after you unmold it. And so that is kind of what I'm trying to help prevent for you is I don't want you to have to go back. So the biggest thing that I've learned when it has come to molds is to just leave it alone in the mold until you know you're done with it. Um, I tried to go back and do a square one and then I tried to go back and do a bracelet and a ring and all of those had turned out to um, not, like I just tried to fill in that gap of the shrinkage and the resin had poured over in a couple areas and created some rough spots. It was just a hot mess. So I fully disagree on taking it out and um, messing with it. I just, I think you should leave it in so that way there's no air getting in on the sides because that's what happens. When you take it out, you're getting air along these sides and there's no way you're gonna fit it perfectly back into the mold. Um, and so my recommendation, just leave it in. I tried to do the same thing with a pyramid and that also happened, so that was not fun. Um, so the other reason why I just decided to sprinkle a little bit of glitter is because this happened when I had poured, oh my goodness, that's light. There it goes. 
ah, <laughs> when I had poured, um, it is all glitter on the bottom. The glitter is heavy, so it sinks. And I, I mean, I think it looks cool, but it wasn't my intention and it's not how I want to always create my pieces. So again, you can see the glitter that stayed on the top. You can sort of see how that created some depth and I had to fill it and dome it with the resin. Now, if you do have it and you accidentally take it out of the mold, what you can do is uh, just set it on a very flat level surface. You have to make sure it's level and then just go ahead and do a little bit of resin. That you definitely need the pipettes for. Um, if you missed it in the video, this is a pipette. You can suck up some of the resin. It is plastic and I could just throw it away. Yeah, honestly, this freaking resin. I would highly recommend it. I love it. If you're looking to up your game and to bring quality to your customers, then I definitely think that the Liquid Diamonds is a very great option for you. And I think it's super easy to work with as a beginner. And that's super important because I know how frustrating it was for me to have a lot of failed mixes and soft cures and to go through all of that back and forth, up and down moments when it comes to resin. So I highly recommend it. So this was just one of the products that the Epoxy Resin Store sent me. I've already talked a little bit about this resin in a last video. Um, I also talked a little bit about the alcohol inks and I also got a couple other resins. And the reason I'm telling you all of this is because they have so many products for you to look at and choose from. And so really you could find something that fits your needs. I highly recommend this resin. Obviously recommend Pinata inks. I have a crap ton of them and I use them all the time. I love them. And I think Pinata is one of the best alcohol ink brands because their alcohol inks are very, very pigmented, which is really nice. And then they also have the cheaper refill options, which I haven't found with other uh, alcohol inks yet. And then I am also gonna be doing a couple more videos on the resins that I've got from the Epoxy Resin Store because there's a wood one, there's another clear cast one, and I just built myself, not built myself, ordered one, but put it together myself, <laughs> a pressure pot and, um, or vacuum, vacuum because it sucks the air out. There's a couple more that I'm gonna be talking about and I'm gonna walk you through a couple more projects. If this is something that you guys enjoy, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.